If you think you have no time to create a beautiful data visualization, let me give you a couple of cheap and easy tricks. No fancy stuff, just a couple of basics to show you how fast it can be to create a meaningful chart. First, we create a chart like this where you can see that some salespeople did not reach their projected sales goal for that year. If you know what to look for, it is a simple comparison of the dots with the range that gives you that insight. Then I will show you some easy tricks to make the chart look a little bit more intentional. And then if you dare to do a tiny bit more, we go even one step further than that and sell your insight using the strategic use of color. All of this shouldn't take that much time. Of course, there's still a lot of things you could improve in the final chart, but this is not the point here. If you want to make the chart even better, you can check out my upcoming data of this course in the description. For now, let me show you how to master the basics. In my quarter file, I already have a code chunk that generates some fake data. Don't worry how the fake data is generated, that's a secret. But if you must know, check out the description of the video. Anyway, in the next code chunk, you see that we have a simple data set from the fake data with a couple of names, the lower and upper bounds of the projection and the actual number of the sales. To create a data visualization from this data set, we pass it to ggplot and we start out by plotting the points of the actual sales. So we map the x-axis to the actual column and the y-axis to the name column. And then we get an absolutely terrible plot. Let's act like we care and make this a little bit nicer. So we increase the size so we can actually see something. We change the shape to fill points and we make the outlines of the points a little bit larger. Okay, this looks a little bit better. These are the points. Let's throw in the rounded rectangles from our previous chart to indicate whether the points fall into that region or not. And you might think this will be quite complicated with some sort of rectangle that we have to plot. We're doing quick and easy tricks, remember? We're just going to plot line segments and each line will go from the lower bound of the projection to the upper bound of the projection and horizontally it will not change at all. There you go, absolutely beautiful lines. Well, not really beautiful, so let's transform them to the rounded rectangles that we wanted to have. And really, the trick is a bit dumb. We're just going to increase the line width and we'll make the line ends round. These rounded edges are not a perfect match for the lower and upper bounds, but honestly, in this scenario, it doesn't really matter. It's an approximation that's good enough for the insight that we want to convey. If you want to have something super precise, you will have to figure out the coordinates of the corners yourself. Anyway, let us change the color a little bit. And with that, we have a first very easy chart. Now to make this look better, we can apply a couple of basic changes. These are so basic that you can and probably should use them in every chart. The first thing is the minimal. That's nice, but what's even nicer is legible font. So let's crank up the base size and use a nicer font. And now that we have less gray color in the background of our plot, we can also change the color of our bars to the lighter gray 80 instead. Next, you should just throw in a couple of labels that describe your chart. So let's add an labs layer and then we start out with the title. This will force you to think, okay, what is even the point of my chart? And in this case, I just want to highlight that most people actually did not reach their projected sales goal. And once you have that active title, the reader can immediately check if he agrees with your assertion or not. So this immediately makes your chart look more intentional without much work. And then you can change the other labels too. For the x-axis, make this into yearly sales. On the y-axis, you actually don't need a label because everyone knows that these are names. And then you can also throw in some additional information for people to look up if they want to learn more. Again, all of this doesn't require a lot of code or a lot of thinking. It's just something to make your chart look more intentional and therefore better. Coming up next is one more very low effort improvement. All you need to do is sort the stuff that you have on your chart. Right now, everything is kind of all over the place. The points jump kind of back and forth. Why not sort the rows so that the points are in an ascending order? Here we do that by using mutate to format the name column where we use FCT reorder on it to sort it by the values in the actual sales column. Nice, there's a lot more order in this now. Your reader will probably be like, Bob, that's super nice. Thank you for putting in five seconds worth of work and sorting your rows. I can read this much faster now. Okay, maybe the scenario will not actually happen that way. But sorting your chart elements is still good, so remember that. Anyway, we have reached step two. That's a good time to remind you to hit that like button if you enjoyed this content. Thank you for that, I really appreciate it. Now, if you really want to drive home your assertion from the title, why not use a little color trick? Just like before, we don't want to overdo it with the colors here either. So we're just going to use one color and gray out everything else that is not important to us. 
The easiest way to accomplish that is to add a little bit of extra information into the columns of our dataset. First, we need to figure out whether an actual value is outside of its projection. So we are going to declare a new column and set its value to true when our actual value is not between the lower projection and the upper projection. In our new dataset, we can actually see that four out of six people are outside their projected sales range. That's a lot. And based on this new column, we can add new colors. Let's add a color column for the points using if else so that if the outside projection column is true, then we're going to use a sort of pinkish color. And in the other case, we're just going to use gray. And we can do the same thing for the line. So we're just going to use the same color, but we're just going to make it a little bit transparent with the alpha function so that it is not as bright. And in the other case, we are going to make it gray as well, but even brighter than the previous gray. All of this gives us a data set that has a lot of colors inside of it. Let's get these colors into our GMs by mapping color to the line color in the GM segment layer and the fill aesthetic to the point color in the GM point layer. Right now, you're probably wondering, why are you putting this into the AES call if you want to be specific about colors? You will have to throw that outside the AES call, just like we did with the other colors. That's such a rookie mistake. And you're right, this is usually what we do. And this reminds me to actually throw out the specific color instruction that we added previously. And then you're perfectly right. If we just leave the code like this, nothing will look like the colors that we actually want to use. But I didn't do this by mistake. What I actually want to do is to use the mapped colors specifically, and I don't want a legend. So I just have to set a scale fill identity layer at the end. This will use the colors from the whole aesthetic as is. Of course, I can do the exact same thing with the color aesthetic as well. And then bam, we have added color highlights. Again, there's a lot more stuff we can do with this chart. But honestly, in just a short amount of time, we created something that has a meaningful insight in its title. And most of the chart elements look like they are designed to support that statement. If you want to learn more about how to make this chart even better, then check out my upcoming Dataverse course in the description. The course is designed to help people who are not designers to make meaningful charts in a short amount of time with ggplot. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video and thanks for watching. I will see you next time.